On the island of Thera, there was a big volcanic eruption. Your book mentioned that some people believe that this volcanic eruption might have triggered the earthquake and the tsunami. Anyway, the Minoan civilization vanished. The Minoans, by the way, were not Greek. They were the forerunners of the Greeks who lived in the area. So just like the American Indians who lived here one time and then uh, the Europeans came in, the Greeks came in later possibly after Minoans had uh, collapsed. Now, folk, this is a story that we're going to find, and we've already found several places where you have an ancient peoples we don't know much about, who all of a sudden disappeared. I talked about the uh, Harappans in India, and then disappeared, and then came the Aryans, um, and then the destruction of the Sumerians, and they were replaced by the Amorites and uh, the Assyrians. Uh, just patterns we find were that mystery people, ancient mystery people, just seemed to have suddenly died out. And again, indicating that at some point back there, there might have been a series of catastrophes brought on perhaps by a natural disaster or even by a war. Anyway, the next group of people were the Mycenaeans. These were definitely Greeks. Um, they were the ancestors of the Greeks, and they spoke something of a Greek language. They were a warrior people, we know, um, who prided themselves on their abilities in battle, and this was to become characteristic of the Greeks who came later. A lot of wars, they fought a lot of wars, and uh, they prided themselves on their courage, their ability in battle. In other words, unlike the Messenians, I mean, unlike the Minoans, who seemed to have been a peaceful people, these were a warlike people. They probably came from northern Europe, the area of Europe around the Pripyat marshes, in other words, somewhere up here. Uh, they were Caucasian. Now, the word Caucasian has to do with the Caucasian mountains here, and again, they might have drifted over. But back, again, that part, as part of the movement of Indo-European peoples from their homeland in Indo-Europe, and the, we talked about the um, Aryans who moved into India, the Medes and Persians who moved into Persia, and the Greeks, and they were talking about the Romans, but a bunch of Indo-European people began to move all at the uh, same time, and we don't know if it was caused by climate change or by an ice age, even a little ice age that got out of hand and got worse than normal, or drying up uh, the climate, whatever, but a lot of people began to move and settle in more favorable lands along the Mediterranean. Yeah, the word Mediterranean means middle of the land, it's a sea, this map doesn't show it very well, it's a, it's a sea and it's in the middle of the, of the world's largest three continents. Now, after the, the, uh, me, the Mycenaeans flourished around 1400 BCE, then you have a period of uh, oh, 400 years, 450 years, from 1100 BC to about 750 BCE, when we know nothing about Greece. This period is called the Dark Age. Now, I say we know nothing. There are persons who believe that uh, we could learn more if we believe what the Greeks taught us, but that's, again, I took a whole course where we spent a whole semester talking about nothing but Greece. And you could take a whole course where you spend a whole year talking about ancient Greek history. And uh, there's all kinds of opinions and all kinds of theories, but we have to just simply state that there is some controversy about the Dark Age. But the Dark Age is a time period where that we know little about that it might have been brought on by, again, an ice age, or wars, or periods of turmoil. And it might be that the stories are there that we just don't believe. But this takes us up to Homer.
We know practically nothing about Homer's personal life except that he is believed to have been a blind poet and he wrote two works, the Iliad and the Odyssey. And they have to do with a 10 year long war that was fought between Greece and the city of Troy, which existed right here along the western coast of uh, what is the name, Turkey. Now, again, some of you might have read about uh, Homer in your literature classes. Have any of you run into him in your high school, college, college literature? Okay, several hands are going up. Yeah, some of you might have read about other sources. I want to state for me before I really get into detail. The Greeks considered Homer to be a serious historian, and they believed every word of what he said as being serious history. Today, obviously, once you read about it, we don't think so. I say some of us don't think so. I mean, folk, I keep harping on this theme. What the ancients said about themselves, modern day historians do not believe. You can decide for yourself why that is so or how much of all this you believe. Anyway, in the story, um, a uh, Greek princess married the king of, whom he was raped by a Trojan, and this event got all the Greek city-states to go to the city of Troy and fight a 10-year-long war in which they could not win. Now, as part of the story, there's a story of Achilles. When Achilles was born, his mother was afraid that my son will grow up and have to fight in a war, and like so many young men, he'll probably die in a war. So she begged the gods, protecting the gods, said, well, dip his body into the river Styx, and he'll, no, he'll never be hurt. So she dipped him in the river Styx, all except for one heel that she held on to. It was not submerged. The rest of his body was invulnerable. Young Archelaus grew up and became a soldier, and as a soldier, he seemed invincible. And all the weapons they could throw at him, the arrows and the spears they could throw, would not hurt him. But then, somehow, somebody noticed that uh, his heel could be hurt. So then someone uh, shot a poison arrow at his heel, and it killed him. So uh, from that time forward, you hear stories about the Achilles heel. You know, a, this is a great ball team, but their Achilles heel is pitching. A great ball team, but their Achilles heel is their front line. Uh, or their weak spot. Um, in the story of the Trojan War, gods would come down and fight for one side or the other. Well, after 10 years of fighting, it was said the Greeks told the Trojans, we give up. So they said, because you've won, we're going to leave your gift. And this gift was a huge wooden horse that was on wheels. So the Trojans rolled this horse inside the gates of their city and closed the gates and retired for the night. In the meantime, the Greek soldiers took off for the sea and pretended to, but they took off only until they were out of sight. And at the first crack of darkness, the Greek soldiers turned around because inside this wooden horse were a bunch of other Greek soldiers who, when everybody in the city was asleep, they opened up the, the trap door to the Trojan horse, got out, opened the gates to the city of Troy, and that night they burned up the city of Troy and went home with all the loot and went home with victory. Now, the one thing that gives credence to this story, folk, is the city of Troy actually was found in the late 1700s. And it was found to have had several layers, like all these cities that lived on this layer for a while, then they rebuilt on top of this layer. And moved. But the last layer was, in fact, destroyed by fire. And with no survivors, it was never rebuilt. Um, I had a high school classmate who's now a professor in Seville. And he said, oh yeah, the story is partly true, but after a while they exaggerated and gods became involved. Again, you can believe what you will. But I've told the story and it's just as close as I can in its original format. 
Um, anyway, the story goes on that after they, they defeated the city of Troy, the king Odysseus started to go home, and on his way home, his ship was blown off course, and he wound up going to Paris, many and numerous mysterious places. And eventually, after many, many years, found his way back home. All of his crew died along the way. He found his way home. The story of his wanderings is called the Odyssey. It is again, uh, folk. I read a book one time where it said that the, you can really, you could believe the story if you can believe that his ship was blown off course and found its way to South America, where he ran into the women called the Amazon women, women uh, who were actually warrior women and who could dominate their men. We were stronger than their men. Uh, the Amazon River. And he said, as he, this author says, he described the story. Again, he said, you can actually trace the story if you can, um, again, believe some of the ancient mythologies. Be that as it may, the, the story of the Odyssey, even more than the Iliad, has a ring of um, otherworldliness about it, mythology, mysticism, and things that the modern mind simply cannot handle. All right. Homer was the was read by every Greek who could read. He was a part of Greek uh, literature, a part of Greek history. Again, the Greeks took him seriously. Alexander the Great, it was said he never went to bed without putting a copy of Homer under his pillow, and he slept on a copy of Homer. He read it and reread it and reread it, and uh, of course, because it was written in poetry style, a lot of Greeks took great. Uh, effort to memorize huge portions of the story as they read it over and over and over again until it became kind of ingrained in their mind. One of the things it did, it, uh, it idealized the Greek past just like the Chinese idealized their past, a lot of other people's idealized their past. And it also was, uh, gave the Greek soldier more incentive to become a hero, a, a military hero, more, to have courage on a battlefield. Um, it incur the Odyssey was designed to encourage their men to remain faithful husbands, even though they might spend a long time away from home on a campaign, but to be true to their wives while they were away. And then the women, likewise, to be true to their husbands while they were away. And it's known a lot of times in wartime the men will go off to fight and the women back home will not remain faithful, or vice versa, the men will uh, not remain faithful to their wives while they're away. Uh, these things have gone on in every war throughout history. Um, the, the Greeks, uh, Homer gave the Greeks a standard of literature that it can be actually compared to the uh, Judeo-Christian Bible that was to come later. The standard that they uh, lived by, tried to copy, tried to emulate. And um, they believed that this was their guidebook to greatness, to courage, and to a better life. All right, so much for Homer, so much for the Iliad and Odyssey, unless someone has any further comments on it. Um, again, you're all, we're all adults here. You can believe what you want to. Um, on, on a personal note, I think that we don't pay as much attention to ancient writings as we should. And we should take them much more seriously than dismiss them as myth and legend. Yes? A what? This has got around a lot in that story. A lot of what? This has got laid a lot in that story.